it's on. Well, I'll edit all of it. You want to do something silly right now? Whatever. Feel free. Hey, what's up family? It's Ian here with B3 Strength and Performance and this is day two of our at-home workouts for you guys. We've got Abby over here. Hey. And let me introduce you to Kate. Kate is one of our members and she is very, very helpful. She's going to be that person that shows you how to scale exercises today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to begin our warm-up in six minutes and we start with reverse lunges. So let me demo. When we step back, I want to make sure that you keep that front leg planted. That knee does not cave in. We keep the knee over the toes and switch legs. So we're just going to count to 10. After you count to 10, Abby's going to show you a walkout shoulder tap. She's going to walk out. She's trying to keep those legs straight so the hamstrings get a little bit of stretch here. Taps one shoulder, taps the other, and then stands right back up. Kate's going to show you how she's going to walk out. And if she needs to for the tap, she's going to drop to the knees into a kneeling plank. Knees are down. She taps, taps, back up and walks it back up guys. Let's go ahead and begin with the reverse lunge. We go in three, two, one, and go. Go ahead and start it up guys. So they are stepping. All we want to do here is get our muscles nice and warm. They're working on that, getting the blood flow. There we go. Good guys, good steps. Again, pay attention to where their knee is cracking. If it is caving in, I want you to really focus on pulling that knee out so you're in a good position. All right, as soon as you guys hit 10, you're going to that walkout shoulder tap. They're going to do five reps. Good, and then right back up, right back down again. Good, we'll be here for three rounds, so make sure you're doing it with them. If at any point you get tired, what do you do? You pause, pause the video, get some water, let your body recover, and then come right back to it. That's good, folks. Good, not only that, today we're gonna show you how to use at-home equipment instead of having to buy equipment. So if you have some, great, use it, if you don't, then we're going to come up with some creative ways. And if you come up with even more creative ways, I want you to leave a comment, share it with us. All right there, getting it, guys. Let's go. There you go. So after you get about that second round, you can always amp it up, speed it up a little bit if you're feeling good. You guys feeling good? Yes, yep. Speed it up a little bit? Sure. There you go. All right, they're going to take those steps a little faster. They're going to walk out a little bit faster. Quick taps and right back up. That's good, guys. Good. Right now their core is tight. Last video we talked about what does a core tight mean? What does that look like? It's as if someone's getting ready to punch you and you are bearing down. Another thing you can do to engage your core, Kate taught me this, is make the S sound. <laughs> oh, there. If you make the S sound, you will engage your core and you can feel it if you put your hand right on your belly. All right, guys, we're in our final round? Yep. All right, final round. We are 90 seconds into the workout. Good, looks good. Another thing I recommend, if, uh, both of their shoes, they have flat shoes. A lot of times people wear running shoes. When you wear running shoes, you don't have as much stability and balance. So when you're moving left and right, you, you tend to lose your balance, lean a little bit. So I recommend either flat shoes like Converse Chucks or like the Reebok Nanos. Plug, hopefully you guys hook us up some money. Uh, if not, go barefoot. Barefoot is fantastic. It's just stinky, that's all. Good, almost there guys. Good work, good work. Nice and warm, feel good? Okay, so now we go into the mobility section. So Abby is going to use a roller. Now this is a PVC pipe. She's gonna use this PVC roller. And Kate is going to do the at-home rolling. So she's gonna use a rolling pin. Hopefully you have one of these. We're gonna start rolling out the quads. So she's gonna lay on the roller. And I'm gonna have you actually, Kate, just have a seat. So that way you can kind of massage your legs at your own, you can provide your own pressure. So we're going to loosen these legs up so they bend and get a little bit better range of motion. Now, if, you've never, if you have a roller and you're not sure how to roll, start with both legs on the roller. If you've been rolling for a while, you can cross one leg over. I'm going to have Abby cross one leg over. Okay. Yep, for your quads. She's going to cross one leg over, and then she's going to begin to bend the leg. That's really important, to bend the leg that you're rolling so you can really get that range of motion. Good. We go. We're going to spend about 30 seconds. You can go a little bit longer if you like. If you love this, most people don't because it hurts, but hurt is good in this case. You can uh, pause the video and go a little bit longer. All right, you got both legs yet, Abs? Yeah. Okay. You're on the second one now? All right, we're going to go for about another 25 seconds, and then we're going to work out the hip flexors. Good work. Any soreness in there? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Sometimes you have a little bit. Now, we're not rolling 
to permanently make a change. We just temporarily want to get more range of motion. That's our reason for this. I have a lot of it. Huh? I have a lot of it, soreness. Yep, good. All right, 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go to the hip flexors. In five, four, three, two, and one. All right, Kate is going to use can good for the hip flexors. You can do this at home, not a problem at all. If you bust the can, the only rule is you got to eat whatever came out of it. All right, we use a kettlebell. All right, Abby's going to use a kettlebell. So if you have a kettlebell at home, you can use the handle to get into the hip flexor. The easy way to find the hip flexor is find those two bony points in your body. We're going to go down at an angle, and this is an area that gets super tight on the body. So she's just going to lay and plank on the handle, and then Kate is going to lay and plank and roll a little bit on that can. And in case you're interested, the hip flexor when it's super tight, especially from sitting, whether you have a desk job, if you drive a lot, or if you do sit, if you sleep in a fetal position, woo, it gets really tight and then it's really hard to work the glute and extend the leg. So we want to loosen this area up and then straighten that leg out. All right guys, you want to switch to the other side? Then after they roll the, this hip flexor, we're going to go into what's called the world's greatest stretch. It's a really good stretch. All right, they'll be here for about another 20 seconds. Hopefully this isn't hurting too bad. If one side is tighter than the other, that's important to know. It usually means you have some type of imbalance and that you're favoring one side. Okay, so five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we begin the world's greatest stretch. You guys ready for the world's greatest stretch? Three parts to the world's greatest stretch. Now we're first going to begin a deep lunge position. It's the first part. Why don't you turn sideways and show them from the sideways to you? All right. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring our hands to the ground and we're going to drive our chest to the ground as low as we're able to get. Some people can go lower than others. That's okay. So don't let it discourage you. We're going to hold for about two three seconds and then we're going to take the inside hand that's against the leg and we're going to lift that hand up and open up the chest so we can stretch out the T-spine. This area is usually very stiff for people. Then the last one is we're going to slide our weight back, straighten up that front leg, point the toe, and hold for again about two to three seconds. We're going to do that one more time. So we're going to go back to our deep lunge position, chest to the ground. Good. Then T-spine, inside hand reaches up. And then we're going to slide our weight back and stretch out that hamstring and point that toe up. Now we're going to switch to the other side. At home, feel free to uh, sing along to your own music. There you go. Good. And then T-spine. And then straighten that leg. Bad thing about not having music is you can hear a lot of bodily sounds. A ton. Cracking, popping, flatulating. A lot of things you can hear. Good. Got one more time. 12 seconds. Good. T-spine. Reaching up. Looks good. And then... Driving the back, stretching out that hamstring. All right, guys, it is time. You guys ready to get it? Yep. Elbow bump because we're staying nice and clean. All right, so now we're going into our skill. The skill today is the hip thruster, so we really want to work the glutes. Now, Abby's going to demonstrate a hip thruster where you can use a bench or a couch, and Kate's going to demonstrate the glute bridge where you're actually laying on the floor, and Kate's going to incorporate some at-home weights. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do... Start with side-to-side -side hip circle walks. Abby, you want to go ahead and put on the hip circle? And then Kate's going to make up her own hip circle. All right, there you go. So this is just a bathrobe. You're just going to tie it around. It's going to go just above the knees. If you want to make it harder, you can put it below the knees. I think it's best to have it above the knees today. And you want to have where your knees are just under your hips, and then you're going to stretch out that bathrobe just a little bit. So what they're going to do is they're going to do 20 walks. They're actually going to walk to the door and back. So just demo just a little bit. Good. So you're just walking side to side, small steps. Now I'm going to have you face the camera and just show them their toes are pointed forward. We don't want our toes pointed out. And we're taking tiny steps, tiny steps. So these aren't big, super big steps. Once they hit their 20 in one direction and 20 in the other, then they're going to take the band off and they're going to go into their hip thrusters. All right. So Abby's going to demonstrate the hip thruster on a bench. So here she's going to go single leg and drive her hips up. So for her, she's going to do 10 on one leg and then switch and do 10 on the other. Kate is going to have both feet on the ground, but she's going to do 20 in a row. And she can use 
What? A gallon of water. A limit of two, by the way, guys. So you can put it right here and she's going to drive and make sure you're pushing through the heel and not through the toes so we can really work those glutes. Are you guys ready to go? Yes. All right, so we're going to go for eight minutes. You're going to rest as you need to rest. Eight minutes resting as you need, but they start with the hip circle. So start with them. Again, it's 20 in one direction, 20 in the other. If you have a smaller area, just step four in one, four in the other, and keep counting until you get to 40. Here we go, guys. We're going in three, two, one, and start them out. So they walk. Good. Nice, tiny little steps. This will get the glute medius burning. So this is a muscle that's right here that is weak on a lot of people. And when you have a weak glute, you tend to have low back pain which can cause all kind of other problems. People have hip problems, knee problems, ankle problems. And if they had strong glutes, they may not have that problem. Good, keep them going, guys. Five. Are you already burning? Yes. Good, Kate, how's that feeling? Good. Okay. Already burning, good. Good, let's keep walking. Good, good. They're almost there, already burning, and then when you get to that hip thruster or the glute bridge, it's really gonna burn. Now, if taking off the hip circle and taking off that band is a pain, leave it on. You can still use it while you're doing the hip thruster, but you will feel that for the entire eight minutes if you do that. All right, there we go. Good. Now, they're both going at their own pace. I want you to go at your own pace, so rest as needed. Some people will rest uh, 45 seconds, some 60 seconds, some 90 seconds. At our gym, we actually put a barbell across the lap, and we're able to put a lot more weight on the lap. And so we need to rest longer when we use heavier weights. Good. All right, again, she's doing 10 on one leg and then 10 on the other, and Kate is knocking out 20 at a time. We did a little bit of this earlier today. My glutes are fine. I'm good to go. Good I'm good to go. Good. There you go. Way to work, guys. Burning yet? Yep. Well, some, some. Feel it. Okay, so really important when you're doing hip thrusters to not arch your back. We want to keep the core tight, like we talked about, and you can even tuck the chin and let the chin follow your hips. All right. Now, if you need to rest, this is when they take a little rest break. But if they're feeling fine, then they're going to put that band right back on and get right back to it. They feel like they're feeling fine. All right. Now they're going to increase their tempo a little bit. So now their steps are going to be a little bit faster. Good. They're kind of racing to the door. I don't know if you can tell. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Good, guys. Good. Let it burn. Embrace the burn. Embrace the burn. That is Abby's thing. Yes. Embrace. Embrace the burn, guys. There you go. That's why our hashtag here at the gym, the biggest hashtag we have is booty by back. Because a strong booty gives you a strong body. Good. We keep working, guys. Yeah? Yeah? A little something? A lot of something. Good. A lot of something. A lot of something. Good, guys. All right. Kate, I'm going to have you keep that on for this time. Can keep it on? There you go. So she's going to keep that band on. She's going to continue to drive her knees out and press against that, excuse me, the bathrobe belt. There you go. And still drive it through her heels so you can see she's pointing her toes up. And that makes sure she's driving through her heels. Do you mind putting your toes down showing the wrong way where you've got the heels coming up? When By doing that, you're really going to lose any glute work. So we're going to go ahead and push off those heels. That's good. Now, Abby, if she wanted to, she could amp it up. If you have a weight, she could always grab that weight and put it right there in the crease. Yes. She's not going to today. I just got the look, so I know it's not happening today. But she could. Okay. All right, so looking at our time, guys, we are almost at the halfway point. Hopefully, you're still going along with us. I know you are. Come on. Of course you are. There you go. Now, if you've got kids and you're doing this workout with kids around you and you want to have fun, doing the hip thrusters, put the kid in your lap. See if they can stand up and balance, or you can have them lay across and try to hold a plank. But there's many ways you can do this. If the kids are out or sleeping and you do this at night, then uh, you can see if you can hold your husband up or your wife. There you go. Here you guys. So normally when in the gym, we are resting. We don't have people that are able to do this continuously because we do have members that have, I mean, you may have 125, 135 pounds on your lap. So you're going to want to take breaks. So don't feel like you've got to keep up their pace. They're used to doing a lot of these movements and they're used to doing with a lot more weight. 
They are slowing down a little bit, though. I didn't notice that. They're slowing down. Just slowly. Okay. There you go. Good. We still got 325 on the clock. And if Kate wanted to do a drop set with the gallon jugs, she could just sip the water every, every round and just drop that way each time. There you go. Good way to drive them up. Kate still has to work out later. I do. Guess what we're doing? More bridges? Deadlifts. And some Tabata bridges. Yes. Yay. All right, we're under the three-minute mark now. Good. It's weird not to work out. I bet. I've lost count. Good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, they knew that from the last video I did that I don't count. Yeah. But everyone knows I don't count. Quality reps, guys. Quality reps. Good. We keep moving. All right. They're back at it. Got their hip circle on. Kate's adjusting her hip circle. All right. Let's keep that pace rolling. We are now at the 220 mark. Good. We keep moving, guys. Good. Good steps. Get into the door and back. Allow this to burn. Don't be afraid of the burn. If you need to stop and pause, you can stop and pause and cry a little bit and yell a little bit. My wife, Kanisha, doesn't curse very often at all, but I'll tell you what. When we're doing hip thrusters, there's some things that come out of her mouth. That, that, I mean, they hurt my heart, guys. There, there you go. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So we've got about 90 seconds to go. If they play their cards right and they are strategic, they can make this last the, the remainder of the time. All right. Good. There you go. Good. We keep them up. You want to go with weight though on this last one? Sure. Okay. Good All right. So we're gonna give a little weight. There you go. But she can still reach and hold on to it. There you go. She can drive it up. There it is. So you can use that. You can use a dumbbell. You can use a child. Uh, one of the things that I've done in the past, I've taken an old basketball, I cut it, and then I put sand in it and then taped it up, and I could use that as a weight as well. There you go. Good one. Almost there. Hanging in there? All right. Kate? Good. Water feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. There you go. There you Drink go. it after this. All right. After they finish this, guys, we're going to call, call it. If you've got another set left, get that set. And then we're going to go into our blast, which is really going to push the envelope here today. Good. Almost there. All right, we still have about 40 seconds. I want to let them rest and recover just a little bit. So we're going to put some of our equipment away. we leave that. Okay. Good. Great work, guys. Good job, Kate. All right. So Kate, if you want to throw the, uh, the gallon jugs out of the way. All right, and then guys, we're going to go into the blast. I hope that you're ready. Again, pause it if you're not ready. Get some water, recover. So our last blast lasts six minutes, and they're going to try to get through all of these reps within that six-minute time period. If they don't make it through, it's okay. They're just going to give it their very best, and it gives us something to shoot for. So we have three movements, and we're going to do ten reps of each movement, then nine, and then eight, then seven, all the way down till you get to one rep. That's the goal. So... I'm going to have you both demonstrate the movements with your equipment. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with the wall ball. Okay. So Abby's going to use the red, and Kate is going to use a bag filled up with canned goods. And she's just going to hold it above and give it a little toss. So they're going to squat, driving their knees out, and toss up and catch. That's one rep. They're going to do ten reps. All right, now we're going to go into the next move, which is the kettlebell swing. So Kate's going to hold that, and you might want to turn sideways. And they're going to go into kettlebell swing. Now, when we kettlebell swing, we step away from it. We chop, we make sure that we have a nice neutral spine and not a rounded spine. And then we're going to hike the football. Hike that kettlebell and then stand up, uh, thrusting those hips forward and snapping. That bell should go up and you'll know that you're getting enough hip action. Then the final movement is the burpee. All right, so Abby's going to do a full burpee, which means chest to the ground, hands up at the top. So you want to demonstrate a full burpee? All the way down, back up, landing flat-footed. Kate's going to show a modification. We're going to do a half burpee. So we just kick out to a plank and then hop up. All right? You guys ready to get it? Yes. All right, so we start with the wall balls. We have six minutes. And we're going to go in three, two, one, and go. All right, guys, we're going to try to keep pace together. So we've got ten reps. 
Three movements. Here we go, guys. Good. Keep them going. Yep. Try to keep your own count. General rule I have is when you forget how much you have, just start at two. Easy way to go. I don't have that rule. I don't count. I just make up the number. Here we go. All right, gonna hike them up. Got ten kettlebell swings. Good. Swing the bag. You can really use any bag at home. Anything that you have that will hold items, you can certainly make it heavier. It's not very heavy for Kate right now. Kate can swing a whole lot more weight, but it is helpful, especially when you're stuck at home. All right, and then they go into their burpees. They've got ten. Here we go, guys. Good, good speed. One. Here we go. Two. Nice way to keep that pace. Three. Four. Five. All right, halfway there. Six. Seven. Eight, two more. Nine, one more. And ten. Now this is where you decide, do I need a rest break? If you need one, take one. If you can continue, then continue. All right, totally up to you guys. It depends on how you're feeling. Give me a second. When I do something like this, this is what I call like a, the, you've got 55 reps of each exercise. So I tend to pause, I rest at the ten reps, then I do nine and I rest, and I try to put eight and seven together, and then I start combining rounds. We ready? Feel good? Okay, here we go, guys. Ten, uh, nine reps now. One, two, good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Great work. All right, we're going into the kettlebell swing now. Nine reps. Oh, I feel really energized. One, two, you guys are killing it. You're doing great. Three, good. We're going to keep working. Four, good. They're almost there. And we hit that four minute mark, so there are four minutes left here, guys. Great work. All right, Furby time. This is where it really gets hard. All right, you can also step out. So if you're doing a half burpee, you can step out. And then just make sure that when we're coming up, we open up our hips and we go flat-footed instead of landing on our toes. A lot of times people will put their feet together, come up on their toes. That's just a bad position for your body. Great work, guys. Good pace. There we go. We're now at the three and a half minute mark. Great job. All right. So they're now going into eight reps. They're feeling every bit of this. I know. I would be dead right now, too. I'd be so tired doing this. But it's a great way to finish off this workout. All right. We're now going to eight reps. You guys ready? Yep. There's 315 on the clock. Here they go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Great work. Great work. All right. Right into their swings. Eight reps. One, two, three, four. Good swing. Look how that bell tilts up. That's really important. And they're not using their arms and just extending their arms. They're using their hips to drive. So those glutes are doing a lot of the work here. Right, eight reps on the burpees. And there's still 240 on the clock. Good work. Good. Bring those hands up. Nice job, guys. Way to reach up. A lot of times people do burpees and their arms hanging down and they barely bring their chest up and they're bent over. You're going to get a whole lot more of the exercise by doing it that way. Great job, guys. All right. Feeling it? Yeah. Good. All right. You're doing great. You're doing great. I know how hard this is. There's still 2 minutes and 15 seconds left. At home, again, you can pause this. If you're committed to get all the way down to 1, you may have to pause to do that. All right. We're going to 7, guys. Once you hit 5, it gets fast, though. Good. Good form. Again, keeping the chest up, letting the knees drive out, not allowing your knees to cave in. By letting those knees drive out, you're going to do a lot more glute work. All right, seven reps on the swing. One, two, three. Good work. Our members, you might see this workout at the gym. It's a good one. Great work. All right, seven burpees here. Way to get there. All right, 90 seconds remain. There you go, great form. Way to keep fighting. Keep battling. It is a battle. It's just as much a mental battle as it is a physical battle. And they're both mad at me right now for even talking about it and not doing the work. And I know that, and I get it. You guys are doing great. There's still 75 seconds left. They're now down to six reps. There you go. Even lightweight, Kate, it's still hard, right? Yep. Yep, still a challenge. Good, just because you're still squatting, you're still swinging and hip thrusting, and you still knock out those burpees. Here we go. Good, we're now under a minute. 
All right, six reps. Two, good. Three, four, five, and six. Great job, guys. All right, six burpees. 40 seconds remain. Good work, guys. Good work. Stay with it. I'm going to challenge them. They're going to be mad at me for this one. I'm going to challenge them to go and grab that wall ball as soon as they finish those burpees. We've got 30 seconds remaining. Here we go. All right, you got it. You got it. I got five now. Five reps. This is where it really starts to speed up. Great work, guys. Good. And then right into their swing. There's 15 seconds remaining. Good. 10 seconds, guys. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You guys were absolutely fantastic. Great work. You want to talk to the camera? No. <laughs> no. Uh, they were really great, guys. You were fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this workout. If you're not finished with it, go ahead and finish your reps. If you're good right there, great job. We'll have another one coming to you guys on Monday. Good work, guys.